In today's Arena Breakout video, we're going to go over the top 10 tips and tricks and things that you should know if you're a brand new player in Arena Breakout. I'm going to start uploading a whole bunch of tips and tricks videos to help you guys up your gameplay. So if you like Arena Breakout content, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you're new. All right, let's go ahead and hop into tip number one, weapon familiarity. After you complete the tutorial and you're finally out on your own in Arena Breakout, you'll notice there is a ton of guns in the game with very robust attachment system. Once you get some cash in your pocket, you can tap the gunsmith button to start making a gun from scratch. And remember that adding attachments will make your gun more cumbersome and can make wielding the gun feel a bit sluggish. So when putting on attachments, keep in mind the ergonomics loss versus the recoil control that you're gaining when setting up your guns. And if you're new to Arena Breakout, I would suggest getting very familiar with the AK series weapons to start with as they are cheap to build and will be your best entry weapon when setting up your sensitivities and farming your missions in the game. And trust me, there will be a lot of bots for you to kill in the game, leading you to probably dying a lot. So the AKs are the best and cheapest effective gun to start off with. Number two, map knowledge. Learning all the maps like the back of your hand is 50% of every single gunfight. This will probably take a few days on each map, but learning the spawn locations and knowing where your enemy likely is will give you an upper hand in many situations. Once you know where every spawn is, you can set up ambushes ahead of time or know when you might be walking into one yourself. So it will be very advantageous to explore every inch of the map to learn where people camp so you can stay aware of exactly which locations you need to take extra care of when traveling past. And that's probably the biggest one to get to know, but once you know all the maps, you're set for life. Number three, looting. When you're a new player in Arena Breakout, you'll get overwhelmed with the amount of items you'll find when opening containers. There's over a hundred lootable items with hundreds of gun attachments you'll come across. When you're new, I would suggest looting everything to get a grasp on how much everything sells for, and you'll notice over time there are items that you would rather pick up than others so you can maximize the amount of money you can make per match. And there are a few tiers of items in Arena Breakout. You have your common gray items, you have your purple items, which are worth a bit more than common and gray items. Then you have your gold items, which can be worth the most in the entire game, with currently the most expensive item being the secret document. After a while playing the game, you'll learn which items are worth grabbing and which ones just completely aren't worth the space. And with some map knowledge under your belt, you'll eventually know the exact places that are worth looting on each map. Which brings me on to my next point, number four, selling items. Something that can be very confusing in Arena Breakout is selling your items. Sure, you could bulk sell everything to Deke, but that won't get you as much money as you could have received if you sold your items the correct way. And it may take a little extra time, but it's worth it in the long run to utilize the market to sell your items for a much larger price tag. And the reason for this is some of the items in the game are actually used to exchange for storage cases from Avita and also used for Deke's daily deals where you can get lucky enough to only need 10K worth of items to trade for a 75,000 T5 helmet. Now keep in mind, you can only sell a certain amount of items on the market per week. So don't just spam sell every single item you have. You're out of weekly slots very fast this way. You should only be selling items on the market that sell for two to three times more what they're worth if you sell them to a vendor. This way, the items that don't sell for more either way, you can just sell to the vendor and put all the good stuff on the market. And if you're a paid monthly subscriber to Arena Breakout, you actually get 16 total sell slots and 700 weekly cap, but we'll go into that later. Number five, healing. There isn't a one size fits all to items when it comes to healing your character in this game. You have four types of heals in Arena Breakout, which you will always need to have a successful raid. You have HP heals, bandages, surgery kits, and stim slash boosters. And each one of these items heals your character in their own perspective ways. Instead of most games where your character is just given an HP bar and only one item needed to heal your character, in Arena Breakout, each part of your body gets its own HP meter and can be shot causing bleeding, which will need a bandage to heal, or getting completely blacked out, which will need a surgery item to fix. Also, having these body parts completely blacked out can lead to slower movement speed with your legs and even worse gun control if your arms are completely blacked out, plus other things like slower loading and slower reloading. Stims and boosters are also used in the game to give you a strength increase to carry more weight, slowly heal your HP over time, and increasing your stamina so you can run farther. Plus, painkillers will also keep your blackout limbs from affecting your character too much. Number six, shooting range. Arena Breakout has a shooting range where you can test new gun builds and also practice your aim and recoil control. This will allow you to get a good feel for your guns or warm up for the day without having to risk your whole kit or wasting money on a super expensive ammo. Using the TVs right here, you can change what type of gear the test dummies are wearing so you can fine tune your knowledge on the best setup to take down chads. You can also tap this reload button to refresh your shooting range so you can keep Keep spraying away at targets till you're ready to take it into the real fight. Number seven, weapons versus ammo. Arena Breakout is extremely unique, and one of those ways is how the gunplay actually breaks down. In a lot of other games, the damage a player deals is based on the weapon they're holding. While in Arena Breakout, the damage you deal is actually based on what type of ammo you use in the gun itself. So for example, using a shotgun with buckshot won't have a high chance of taking out an enemy quickly, whereas the slug ammo option for the shotgun does have the potential to one-tap enemies. And this goes for every gun in the game, with 
each ammo type having its best in slot option for the most damage dealt per round shot. And in a future video, I'll go in more depth about every ammo type and the exact damage that they deal. Depending on what your goal is in the match, you might want to bring a lot of low tier ammo into an unranked match to take out low geared Timmies and get your missions done. Or you might need to invest into the high tier ammo and ranked modes to compete against all the other T6 chads waiting with their M61 ammo to one tap you in the chest. Number 8. Inventory Management In Arena Breakout, you have to learn how to manage your inventory in and out of every single game. The storage in the lobby is where you keep all the items you acquire and extract with, and when you first start playing, you will have a small amount of storage in the lobby to work with. But, you can upgrade this storage in a few ways. You can purchase the storage containers from Evita by trading the items found in the raids. You can pay a monthly subscription fee to gain a lot of perks with one of those perks being extra storage space. And you can also use bonds, the paid currency in the game, to increase the amount of slots available for storage containers overall. Another aspect of inventory management that is important to learn is in-game, you have storage in your pockets, rigs, and backpack. Your rig should be used for holding mags, heals, and spare ammo slash nades, while your backpack is used for holding all the items you find and want to extract with. You can also get a secure lockbox where anything you put in there comes out of the raid with you no matter if you extract or die, and that is a completely separate subscription fee that you can choose to partake in or not. There's also a keychain you can purchase to secure your keys, but that leads me into my next tip. Tip number 9. Missions. In Arena Breakout, there are loads of missions, with each one of them offering you varying value of rewards, with the final mission granting you a permanent keychain from Evita. And this way, you don't have to buy one. The missions span across all the maps and are honestly pretty easy. If you take a few days, you can grind them all out and get your free keychain, and all of the loot will help you in your rank grind later on. There's about 73 missions in total, with 16 of those alone being for Evita to get your keychain. And last but not least, number 10, free to play versus pay to lose. Now, we all want to see Arena Breakout 5 well into the future, so we can enjoy this game for many years to come, which is why, just like in most games these days, a monetization system exists. You can either choose to invest in the game or not, it's up to you. Paying real money to buy Cohen so you can purchase level 6 sets, in my opinion, is a pay to lose strategy rather than a pay to win strategy, and I'll tell you why. If you need to pay for Cohen to buy your gear, then you probably aren't that skilled at the game, because if you were skilled at the game, you would just be going into the matches, eliminating players, and getting your level 6 that way. So swiping your credit card to get Cohen, honestly, is a pay to lose strategy, because if you don't need it, then you you wouldn't do it. And for all the free to play players, that's just more level six sets out there for you guys to go farm up. Now, this doesn't mean you shouldn't buy the battle pass or supplies pass for extra loot to grind the game out with. If you have the funds and want to support the devs, by all means, purchase those to help you get a boost to the start of your arena breakout journey. Now, I plan on making all sorts of tips and tricks videos ranging all the way from what noobs need to know, all the way from what pros might not even realize yet. And this game has loads of content coming in the future. So we've got a roadmap for content for at least a couple years here. And if you want to be along for this channel's ride in the arena breakout community, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for daily videos. Everyone, some, sometimes I still upload PUBG stuff, but they'll also be arena break. Anyways, subscribe if you like arena breakout content. I hope you found this video somewhat helpful if you're a new player, and I hope to see you in the next one. Later.